Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. November 24th, 2021. Of course, the eve of Thanksgiving, where you know you would have expected uh, lighter trade in, of course, this uh, this Wednesday prior to the Thanksgiving holiday. But uh, instead, yeah, you know what? We had a tremendous amount of economic data that was dropped, everything from GDP to, uh, well, Fed minutes, and uh, yet markets, uh, they just ground a little higher, but well off the lows of the session. Nevertheless, one of the things I was trying to point out of the weekend video, we got a tremendous amount of trade action throughout the course uh, of this week. Of course, the week is not over, just to give everybody a heads up. Friday will be a half a trading session. They give us three and a half hours of trade on Friday. And again, listen, people are home. And what do you do when you're home and family is there? You trade, people. And that's exactly what has been uh, transpiring. In fact, to show you, if you look at like the S&Ps in terms of uh, volume, you know, one of the things I've been pointing out a lot lately was like kind of the lack of volume in the last couple of weeks. Take a look. The uh, volume in the S&P futures, it's picked up. It's picked up quite considerably. Now, you know, today, uh, maybe the marketplace kind of cooled off a little bit uh, after some of the FOMC minutes had come out. And again, we just kind of ground a little bit higher. But there was, again, a huge amount of trade action specific to the NASDAQ today that touched down all the way to 16,100 and ripped. I mean, we ended at 16,350. So, uh, hey, not bad. A 250 point range in what you thought was going to be ultimately a quiet holiday session. I'll take it. So with that, let's actually look at a couple specific underlyings that have just been driving trade. And one of the things that I continue to point out is that the market as a whole, and you know, I'm a big time index trader. I always try to, you know, elaborate upon that with uh, individuals maybe that are a little bit newer to Theo trade. So I have less tendency to focus like on individual products. However, in a marketplace like we're in right now, you have to focus on some individual stocks because what you are in fact seeing okay, is individual stocks that are effectively driving order flow. But one of the things, for those of you that uh, that do kind of scalp a little bit on an intraday basis, if you trade NASDAQ futures, trade S&P futures, I don't know, maybe you're just you know trading some SPY options or some QQQ options throughout the course of uh, any given trading session, okay? It is imperative right now to understand that like the entire pre-market session, when I start talking about like pre-market session, what I'm talking about is, again, before the market opens, none of this seems to matter as of late. I mean, like literally, you take a look at the NASDAQ or the S&Ps. I mean, I'm an individual that, uh, hey, I don't mind saying this. I wake up in the middle of the night, you know, and uh, I'll take a quick sneak at the uh, at the phone, of course, and uh, bring up my mobile application. Look what the futures are doing in the middle of the night. Come on, people. Admitting it is the first step today. Nevertheless, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, take a look at the futures, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a feel already, even in the middle of the night, of maybe what that next trading day is going to look like right now. Unequivocally, none of that works. It just doesn't work. And again, nor do market internals. You look at like the advanced decline line throughout the course of the day. And I've been harping on this just the last, you know, couple of weeks of trade. Advanced decline line, what's it good for? Absolutely nothing at this point in time. And I'll take it even a step further because there are a couple of studies here that you know, I've helped develop and uh, like Quantix and so forth, useless like ticks. Ticks are not going to get you anywhere right now. Where are ticks going to get you? Uh, yeah, not going not gonna to happen because we literally have individual stocks that order flow, all right, comes piling in from retail clients. And this is what's now driving markets. I mean, other than, you know, the Tesla, you know, NVIDIA and a handful of other stocks, well, what else on the screen matters? I mean, today, you know, you realize they had the financials. There was some sell side activity and people, it got a little violent, if you will, inside of the financials. Well, where was the impact to the S&Ps at that point in the day? You don't even see it. I just wanted to make that point because, you know, most of the time, yeah, I would look over at something like financials throughout the course of a trading day. Right? And you're like, oh, the financials, look at this. Okay, they dipped hard, man. They dipped hard right here at about 11 o'clock. And what did the uh, what did the S&P futures do at exactly the same moment? They were rallying. Okay, oh, oh, really? And then, and then, of course, you look over at something like, you know, the energy sector. The energy sector took off out of the gate this morning. What do the S&Ps do? Okay, the S&Ps, eh, listlessly 
rows, but then you start to look at underlyings. And again, this is where you get specific. The order flow, okay, from something like Tesla, you realize it was down in the pre-market and exploded right out of the gate, which took the S&Ps up. Uh, the same is true of NVIDIA. NVIDIA, if you took a look, explodes pretty much out of the gate. What caused that? Now, this is the part that uh, you might want to uh, pay very careful attention to. What caused it? It's retail. I've been in this business uh, since the late 90s, and I, I started my career on the professional trading side, but, you know, briefly moved over to like Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade. And I've just never seen another time, okay, where simply retail order flow dictated what happened in the marketplace. And it's one of the reasons why. When I say retail order flow, I'm talking about you. You're sitting at home, okay? You're hiding from family right now because, you know, it's family and you're sitting there and trading, which of course, as I said, that's, that's going to happen the course of this week. And it's what's going to happen on Friday. It's going to happen, you know, between Christmas and New Year's. People are going to sit home and they're going to trade, all right? We've, we've been kind of locked up now for a long time. Everybody's had enough. And uh, yet, you know, you sit there, you hide, you trade a little bit, but uh, retail order flow is like literally dictating markets, okay, on an intraday basis. So you can try to handicap anything you want with your market internals and advanced decline line and breath. Okay, I can go all day long on here, but again, never has there been a time that I can recall in my trading career where all of a sudden the marketplace opens and here they come. It's retail, all right, and retail just comes pouring in to the marketplace, specifically to like an NVIDIA, specifically to like Tesla, right? And they shift market moves. And it's, uh, again, first of all, it's shocking, but the uh, at the exact same time, okay, there's a couple things that have clearly and decisively changed. Number one, it's retail that is actually shifting markets. Number two, they're doing it through means of options. Because if you buy a ton of calls, Okay. The market making firms sell you those calls and the market making firms turn around and have to buy stock to actually mitigate risk, which just drives us into, again, these gamma squeezes. It's one after another, after another. The crazy part of all of this is, okay, if we're not moving heavily into, you know, Tesla and NVIDIA, all we're doing is playing a rotation game. You guys realize that like Apple, Okay, this one's kind of fallen off everybody's radar screen, but it shouldn't. It's had like nine consecutive up days right now. Nine consecutive up days. The irony is retail, they're all over it. Okay, and today, today the option volume, it dove off a little bit though inside of Apple. It's doing about half of what it has versus the previous five days. Nevertheless, okay, put on your big boy pants because they were trading this. And look, the number of calls traded, right? And I love to point this out. When you see traded at the ask or above, you know, basically what you're looking at, and then that's why, you know, I talk about like, how do I know it's retail order flow? You know, if the market on an option, market on an option, let's say is three bucks, okay, at let's say 310, and it says traded at the ask or above, predominantly it's retail that just goes in here, like this is the ask, right? This is the bid. When it says traded at the ask or above, people just go buy it, buy it, buy it. And it's predominantly market orders that are being used in there. And it's something that you've never really seen before. Again, in the marketplace where retail, especially those of you that are really, really new, they use like marketable orders. They just go in there like, I'll take it. And, um, and again, you can see retail order flow piling in right at the cash open. Bell goes off. It's uh, the Pavlovian response as that bell goes off. People are buying calls and driving stocks higher. Nevertheless, Apple marginally higher over here but this has been a spectacular move. So the point that I make with this is if they're not in NVIDIA and they're not in Tesla, they're rotating now to Apple, okay? If, uh, again, if you start to have, start to have, you know, uh, tech down a little bit, you realize what that did to the financials throughout the course of this week. In fact, it's worth noting the financials this week, take a quick glance at the auto expected moves because, again, I mentioned this on the uh, weekend update. Uh, if we started to see tech sell off, you would like to at least see wild rotations, both into where financials, which are outside the expected move to the upside. And of course, the energy sector, which is smoking right now to the upside. So this is likely to continue. What? What is likely to continue? All right. A couple things. Number one, wild rotations. We do not have any good degree of correlation. Like if you're looking at the last couple of days and you're thinking this marketplace is really starting to sell off, we haven't done anything. We haven't gone anywhere. I mean, where where have we gone inside of the S&Ps except right back into the range that we've been in the last couple of weeks. In fact, it's uh, worth noting here. I'm going to snap this to a 30-day, one hour, and I just want to show you this. Ooh, 
totally and completely flat, right? Now this this flatness, if you will, uh, started all the way back on uh, November third. So from November third to uh, you know present time, you know, just about uh, three weeks into this, we've actually just channeled back and forth a little sell side activity this week, but uh, nothing uh, too significant. Of course, we would bring up the Nasdaq in this case because the Nasdaq felt like it was the forefront of the sell off. Ironically, it's the exact same range. When did we enter into that range? Same day, basically uh, November third. So we're inside of a relatively tight range over here. Last but definitely not least here on. On uh, this update, of course, prior to Thanksgiving, we'd want to take a look at the uh, expected move. And one of the things that uh, really kind of resonates with me on a week-to-week -week basis is where is the marketplace, okay, in relation to, well, the entire week. Uh, the answer in this particular case is for the most part, we are massively unchanged here on a Wednesday. Uh, so what do we have left? We have Friday. And that's it, okay? Again, it's a short and it's a holiday week. And again, Friday is going to be a half a trading session. There is one very curious note, and I'm going to leave you guys with this thought. Yes, the S&P is kind of ground a little higher today. I mean, listen, a 0.25% move for me, that's considered massively unchanged. But there is one interesting note over here. Volatility, all right, has been kind of creeping up throughout the course of this week, ever so slightly higher in the VIX. And it backed off a little bit today and yesterday. We actually have bonds that are reversed a little bit higher. You start looking at like VVIX, and VVIX came down, all right? So some of the risk abated over here. But again, some of the volatilities look a little unusual. Last, again, last but definitely not least, the dollar. Complete and utter breakout to the upside. Now, maybe, maybe this is just you know, part of what's going on inside of Turkey. If you've missed Turkey recently, there is a uh, complete and utter destruction of the uh, the Turkish lira right now, causing hyperinflation. Maybe they're just dumping capital into the U.S. dollar and everybody around the world is a little nervous. But um, nevertheless, this does, okay, raise a little bit of concern for the markets right now. The dollar strength is, it's not just strong. We are exploding higher, okay? And the last just couple of trading sessions, you can see the magnitude of the move. Lately, we've actually used the dollar as kind of our new VIX. Well, this uh, this would actually, you know, portend that there could be risk forthcoming. We'll watch both bonds and volatility very, very carefully in the days to come. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll be back live on Friday for that half a trading session, and of course, doing the weekend update. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.